Our exclusive interview with Julian Assange. He's standing by from his safe room at the Ecuadorian Embassy in London. First, our Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas has more on Assange and the assistance WikiLeaks is providing to NSA leaker Edward Snowden. Good morning, Pierre. Good morning, George. WikiLeaks officials were with Snowden when he fled from Hong Kong to Russia, and they have provided him with legal guidance. Assange is said to be pressing Ecuadorian officials to grant Snowden's request for asylum. Some say it's the latest provocation of the U.S. He has long been a prickly thorn in the side of the U.S. government. But who is Julian Assange? Hacker? Activist? A journalist? Or fugitive criminal? We've exposed the world's secrets. He is the mastermind behind WikiLeaks, which has published the secrets of nations and is now at the heart of a global debate over the public's right to know. The WikiLeaks organization published hundreds more internal government documents. Assange has embarrassed the powerful and revealed top secret information about U.S. and other government activities. Got a bunch of bodies laying there. But at what cost? It puts people's lives in danger, threatens our national security. Now the man who has been on a crusade to expose what he believes is wrongdoing faces accusations of his own. You have no right to arrest Julian Assange. For more than a year, he's been holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London, where he sought refuge to avoid possible criminal charges. And today, WikiLeaks and Assange are standing shoulder to shoulder with perhaps the most damaging leaker of them all. Edward Snowden, the fugitive former government contractor who went public with top secret information about some of the crown jewels of the intelligence community. Some U.S. officials say, make no mistake, these, are se these leaks have serious consequences, that the terrorists are changing the way they communicate because of these disclosures. George? Okay, Pierre, thanks. Let's talk now to Julian Assange from the Ecuadorian Embassy in London, joined here in New York by Jesslyn Radak a former whistleblower from the Justice Department who disclosed details of post-9-11 interrogation practices, now with the Government Accountability Project. Welcome to you both. And Mr. Assange, let me begin with you. Thank you for joining us. What can you tell us about where Edward Snowden is right now and where he's expected to go? Uh, thank you. Thank you, George. I, mean, I wish I could <clears throat> answer these uh, questions of yours in more detail. The situation now with Edward Snowden is a very sensitive one. It's a matter of uh, international diplomatic uh, negotiations. So the, <clears throat> there's little that I can productively say about uh, what is happening uh, directly. Uh, but look, let's pull back a bit. Uh, why is it that Mr. Snowden uh, is not in the United States? Uh, he should feel that he should be afforded justice uh, in the United States. States. Uh, but his situation is very similar to a situation that I face uh, and that my staff uh, face, where we have been sucked into a, a grand jury in Alexandria, Virginia. That's where the charges for Mr. Snowden came from, Alexandria, Virginia. Well, what do we know about that district? It's six kilometres from the centre of Washington, D.C. Uh, the jury pool is made up of CIA, Pentagon, uh, etc. Uh, in the legal community in the United States, it's known as the, the rocket docket because of the lack of scrutiny proce procedures have there. Uh, there's a 99% chance that if you're, sorry, a 99.97% chance uh, that if you're a, a target of a grand jury, you'll be indicted, and a 99% chance uh, that if you're indicted by a grand jury, you'll be convicted. So this is not a situation, uh, ignoring all the political rhetoric which we've seen, which has been terrible over the past two weeks, uh, where Mr. Snowden uh, can feel that he would be afforded Justice, but is there uh, any the country States. right so, now that will grant uh, Mr. Snowden advice, aside, uh, asylum? Well, under UN conventions, Mr. Snowden has the right uh, to apply to nearly every country uh, for asylum. Of course, asylum decisions are always a mixture um, of the political and the legal. Um, and I think there are, there are several countries where it is politically possible uh, for Mr. Snowden to receive asylum, and many countries, of course, uh, where he's legally uh, entitled uh, to that kind of protection. Uh, it's, no one is alleging that any of his acts are anything uh, other than political, uh, that he has acted in a, in a manner uh, to draw attention to a very serious problem uh, in the United States where... Um, without the, the will of Congress, without the will of the American population, we now have a, a state within a state. We have a transnational surveillance apparatus 
Glenn Greenwald just last night spoke about how a new technology to be rolled out by the National Security Agency uh, is going to attempt to intercept one billion uh, mobile phone calls whether, a day. No one signed up for this. Obama does not have a mandate for that. With respect, no one has Mr. a mandate Assange, for that. Many people Congress have said has been that this taken is, for a ride. Excuse me, many people said this is far more than political, including Secretary of State John Kerry. He spoke out on this earlier this week, saying that Snowden's revelations are putting people at risk. Take a look. People may die as a consequence of what this man did. It is possible the United States will be attacked because terrorists may now know how to protect themselves in some way or another that they didn't know before. Does that concern you at all? Well, look, we have heard this rhetoric. I myself was subject to precisely this rhetoric uh, <clears throat> two, three years ago, and it all proved to be false. And we, we ha had this uh, terrible discussion about, uh, which even exists uh, in some of the tabloid press today, about WikiLeaks causing harm. But not a single US government official, no one from the Pentagon, no one from any government uh, says that any of our revelations in the past six years has caused anyone uh, to come to physical harm. Uh, and the revelations by Snowden, uh, I mean, these are even more uh, abstract. Have you spoken uh, in their to Mr. Snowden? The, the are you confident he's we safe right now? Uh, publishing. Um, our legal uh, people have been in contact uh, with Mr. Snowden. I can't say anything about the uh, present uh, situation, but you know, the United States uh, cancelled his passport. United, uh, Joseph Biden, uh, the day before yesterday, uh, personally uh, called President Correa, uh, trying to pressure him. That's not acceptable. Uh, Asylum is a right that we all have. It's an international right. The United States has been founded uh, largely on accepting political refugees from, from other countries and has prospered by it. Uh, Mr Snowden uh, has that right. Ideally, he should be able to return uh, to the United States. Unfortunately, that's not the world uh, that we live in, uh, and hopefully another country uh, will give him the justice that he deserves. Edward Snowden's father has spoken out. He fears that you and WikiLeaks are manipulating his son. And he said that, quote, I think WikiLeaks, their focus isn't necessarily the Constitution of the United States. That's a concern for me. How do you respond to Edward Snowden's father? Well, he didn't say that. He, he, called, he said might be. Um, Mr. Snowden father as a parent of course he is worried in this situation every father would be worried in this situation um, we have uh, established um, contact with uh, mr snowden's father's uh, lawyer to uh, put some of his concerns uh, to rest but i mean this isn't this isn't a situation that you know that uh, wikileaks uh, is um, uh, in charge of, if you like. Uh, this is a matter uh, for states uh, at a very, very serious uh, level to understand um, and, and sort out and, and behave uh, responsibly. Uh, because we've had some experience uh, in, in the past with publishing, with, a, with attacks and political rhetoric from the United States, with asylum and so on. Uh, and I have a personal sympathy for Mr. Snowden. Um, we did what we uh, could and will continue to you do so. You have put yourself uh, in the middle of this. To try and help him through. And I, and I want to ask a further question on that. Uh, Glenn Greenwald has said that no matter what happens to Snowden, his secrets, the secrets that he's taken will get out. How? And does WikiLeaks have, have possession of those secrets right now? Uh, look, there, there is no stopping the publishing process at this stage. Um, great care has been taken to make sure uh, that Mr. Snowden uh, can't be pressured uh, by any state uh, to stop the uh, publication uh, process. Um, I mean, the, the United States, by cancelling his passport, has left him, for the, uh, for the moment, um, uh, marooned uh, in Russia. Is that really a, a great outcome? Uh, by the State Department. Is that really what it wanted to do? Um, I think that's every citizen uh, has the right to their citizenship, uh, to, to take someone's uh, principal component of citizenship, their passport, away from them uh, is a disgrace. Uh, Mr Snowden hasn't been convicted uh, of anything. There are no international uh, warrants out for his arrest. Um, to take a passport from a young man in a difficult situation like that is a disgrace. He, he is a hero. Uh, he is uh, told the people of the world and the United States that there is mass, unlawful interception of their communications far beyond anything that happened under Nixon. He, Obama can't just turn around like Nixon did and said, 
uh, it's okay uh, if if the president does it, if the president authorizes it. That's not it. what he's saying, and but sir, he has also broken the law. Uh, and let me bring that it. now to Jesslyn Radek, who's also here with me right now. Uh, Julian Assange mentioned uh, Edward Snowden's father, who's also written, his attorney has written a letter uh, to Eric Holder, the uh, attorney general, saying that there, he believes that his son would be willing to come back to the United States if he would not be detained or imprisoned prior to trial, if he would not be subject to a gag order, if he would be tried in the venue of his choosing. Do you think it would make sense for Snowden to return under those circumstances? I actually don't. I have represented people like Thomas Drake, who was an NSA whistleblower, who actually did go through every conceivable internal channel possible, including his boss, the inspector general of his agency, the Defense Department inspector general, and two congressional committees, and the U.S. turned around and prosecuted him and did so for espionage and threatened to tie him up for the rest of his life in jail. I think Snowden's outlook is bleak here. And instead of focusing on Snowden and shooting the messenger, we should really focus on the crimes of the NSA. Because whatever laws Snowden may or may not have broken, they are infinitesimally small compared to the two major surveillance laws and the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution but these that surveillance NSA has programs, violated. As the president has pointed out, were passed by the Congress or overseen by a court. Well, the, both of those are incorrect. Congress has not been fully informed. Only they have the, passed the laws. The there intel is oversight. There is okay, but there's oversight. a secret interpretation of Section 215 of the Patriot Act, which nobody knows except for the intel committee of Congress, and even they say that they think most Americans would be appalled by that. And to say that it's been approved by the courts is a misnomer because it gives the impression that federal courts have improved this, when in reality, it's the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, which has rubber stamped which every Which is a single... federal court. No, it is a secret court set up at the Justice Department that has federal judges on it. But it, last year, it approved 2,000 out of 2,000 applications. They hear only the government side, and they've never they've rejected an application one time since 1978. Let me bring this back to Julian Assange. You know, back in 2010, an email that was revealed from you by, by Bart Gelman in Time Magazine said that you hoped the revelations uh, from WikiLeaks would bring about quote the total annihilation of the current U.S. regime. Is that still your goal? And what did you mean by that? I, I didn't say that, and there is no, no such email. It's this is simply Time false. Time Magazine in December uh, 2010. This, yeah, well, I mean, Time Magazine. But um, this is a, it's very interesting that you raise such a thing like that. You know, we, we are in a situation where we have these extraordinary revelations that are causing great embarrassment uh, to a new national security state that is arising in the US. Uh, it's not just the US, similar national security states are arising in other countries. Uh, but it is trying to evade democratic will. It's, it's treating Congress like a bunch of fools. And we saw Clapper up there lying, bald-faced lying uh, to Congress. We have secret interpretations of the law. What does the law mean if there's secret interpretations and secret courts? We have Bradley Manning's trial uh, starting to, uh, continuing uh, tomorrow. Uh, a young man, a good man, as far as anyone can tell. Uh, motivations are entirely political, as far as anyone argues. Uh, same, with, same with Snowden. Uh, being put through this uh, meat grinder, um, where a new precedent is trying to be set, which is communicating with the press, uh, is committing espionage. And it's not just uh, a precedent that's been trying to be set uh, on these whistleblowers. It's a precedent that's trying to be set on journalists uh, and publishers me, me, as well. Meantime, we saw Mr. That Mr. Shines, of, meantime, you're of being James given Rosen safe harbor me. by the Ecuadorian government. That the Korea administration has been admonished by human rights organizations for restricting press freedoms, prosecuting journalists. The Inter-American Press Association calls its new media law quote the most serious setback for freedom of the press in the recent history of Latin America. So, does it make you uncomfortable to be harbored by a government that goes after journalists? And do you see a double standard there? Well, these accusations are, a lot, are largely blown up. There are, of course, all sorts of problems in any particular country. But why, why are they being spoken about? What has happened here is a mass revelation uh, of illegal uh, transnational spying by the National Security Agency, the collection uh, of the communications records of every single person uh, in the United States, laying out the entire community structure of the United States. And these sort of um, 
attempts are merely a, a, a mechanism to try and uh, shift ground. But, you know, go to CPJ, uh, Committee to Protect Journalists in New York. It lists a number of uh, journalists in Ecuadorian prisons, zero. And it has been zero for a very long time. There's 48, there's 48 in Turkey. Um, so we've got to keep things in some kind of perspective. Fine, there's finally. no allegation that Ecuador... Uh, is, Finally, no allegation Ecuador is involved in, in mass transnational surveillance or uh, assassination programs and so on.